Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial playthrough. In this episode we're going to talk about treating our wounds, the healing system in Cataclysm, and then maybe we'll talk about sleeping in general. So, we've been wounded. We've been playing for, uh, I mean, God, we're on episode 30. We've been playing for 15 hours and we're finally on day two uh, because I just can't shut up and I have a lot to talk about. So you see, we've, we've taken not a lot of damage, but we've taken some damage. Again, we start with five vertical pipes. There is a mutation in the game that lets you see precise numbers on how, uh, how what your HP is. Most, most of the time, you're not going to have that particular trait, so you'll get used to the vertical pipe system. And then your maximum HP is based on your strength stat. So uh, we have more HP than uh, some basic characters because we took strength of 12. Let's see here, it says your total HP. Um, we don't know precisely how much hit points we have and, and how many we need to re repair, but uh, we do know that we should treat our wounds because it will help us recover faster. Now, uh, before we do this, do we have any dirty water? I don't think we do. Give me a gallon jug. We're gonna go fetch some water really quick. Gallon, do I have any empty gallon jugs? I don't, so let's pick a low value. Here's a jug of bleach with seven in it. What we can do is unload the seven bleach and we can pour it into another container that already contains bleach just to fill that up. That way we're not wasting the bleach and now we have an empty gallon jug. So what we're gonna do is head out. We're gonna find ourselves some water. Now we know the toilets in our basement have water, but I'm gonna look around for a, a refillable source a lot of times in the forest you will find single tiles of water like here uh, it's pretty far I don't know about heading out actually it should be pretty well straight to the south here we have shallow water so oh excuse me I have the hiccups uh, so we'll head south here and we'll grab some water pour into container gallon jug you fill the gallon jug with water great we'll head back to base so we wanted some dirty water Dirty water is good for crafting. Uh, it's not dirty water. It's just not boiled clean water. So like if we drank this, it would make us potentially get food poisoning. Very good chance of giving us food poisoning. I think you can get parasites. There's a lot of bad things. Don't ever drink unclean water. I do by accident occasionally, but uh, we're going to dump this not on our beverage pile because we don't want to accidentally drink it. So we'll just dump that over here. It's still close enough for us to craft with. So there's some unclean water. So we could make this into clean water. We could do things with this. So we're going to use this for crafting. So let's start a fire because we're going to need fire for this. Now, uh, did we ever make, we did not make a pile for medical supplies. Yes, we did. Okay, so we have these first aid kits. Why don't we go ahead and disassemble another first aid kit? There's really no reason not to. Go ahead and take that apart and we'll just dump that on the pile here. Okay. So, we have two main methods by which we will treat our wounds. We could treat our pain, but our pain doesn't matter. We're getting ready to go to bed, so it'll be gone when we wake up. We don't need to worry about that. Next, we want to treat our HP. Now, we can treat our HP with two main materials, antiseptic uh, and with bandages. Bandages. Antiseptic, it doesn't matter what kind of antiseptic you have. Uh, as far as I know, all antiseptic is still the same quality. There was a push at one point to make uh, low quality antiseptics. So like in real life, hydrogen peroxide is pretty garbage as an antiseptic, but in the game, it works uh, to, 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 to de, de, okay, brain, work with me brain, to disinfect wounds, hydrogen peroxide will work. In real life, it's not really that powerful. Mostly it just bubbles and it doesn't really clean the wound, so to speak, uh, as much as a proper antiseptic would. So as far as I know, there's still no difference in the different types of antiseptic. They all function the same. I could be wrong about that. So just know that if you find something like hydrogen peroxide and it says like weak disinfectant or something like that, there's a chance that that is worth, that's probably worse for healing than the good antiseptic. But we're gonna work on the principle that they're all the same. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. So the two main ways you treat a wound is to apply disinfectant to it. This will increase your overnight healing by a lot. And you can apply bandages to your wounds. This will increase your overnight healing slightly. 
Um, bandaging is not as powerful as disinfecting. Disinfecting will give you the most bang for your buck, but disinfectant antiseptic is a lot harder to come by than bandages. And in fact, I'm going to prove that to you because we're going to make some bandages of our own. So if we go into our menu and type bandage, let's say we have a couple options. We have a makeshift bandage, and then we can convert those makeshift bandages into bleached or boiled bandages. Uh, which is what we're going to do. We're going to make some makeshift bandages. You can tell uh, here that this only requires a rag and it will level our tailoring, uh, which is not super significant. We'll make, um, we're going to treat our NPC as well. So let's make 12 bandages. We can just put down our bat and it will be, yeah, we made 12 bandages. Now, if we use these bandages, they are not very good as far as bandages go. So like if we drop these here on our medical pile, actually we have some in our inventory, so let's just compare them. Boop, doop, 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 doop. Oh, they're wielded, that's right. Okay, makeshift bandage has a very poor bandaging quality and a base bandaging quality of poor. This is not good. If we look at the actual pre-manufactured, pre-cataclysm bandages, they have a base bandaging quality of good, which is better than poor. And they have a actual bandaging quality of poor, which is better than very poor. And the reason it's poor is because we are not very good at first aid. So you'll see the stats are actually the same. So if we were just trying to stop bleeding, it doesn't matter. The makeshift bandage is exactly as effective as the, the uh, actual properly manufactured bandage. But for the purposes of bandaging our wounds, these are considerably worse than these. So the makeshift bandage is the lowest tier bandage as far as I'm aware in the entire game. So let's convert those to boiled bandages. This is why we picked up that water because we need clean, clean water or regular water to boil these bandages. Now we're actually gonna only be able to make four which is 12 actual bandages. Um, so we're, we're just gonna make these. Use the dirty water please. Don't waste our clean water on boiling bandages. We did mess up along the way and lose some progress which is basically just slowed down our process. Now let's compare the boiled makeshift bandage with the proper bandage. Now you'll see the proper bandage uh, is still good and poor. The makeshift bandage is now average and poor rather than what was it poor and very poor. So you'll see this is a step up from the regular rag bandage but it's still not quite as good as a proper bandage. Now for the most part Boiled makeshift bandages are the ones that I use, and the reason for that is because they're much more, because we can make them. They're, they're so much more readily available. All they require is uh, rags and then boiling the makeshift bandage, so just a little bit of water. Rags and water are very plentiful in the world, and so you can pretty much make an infinite number of boiled makeshift bandages, whereas bandages, the proper pre-cataclysm bandages, are things you have to find in the world. Now, they come in every first aid kit, they're pretty common out in the world, but they're still not as common as Infinity, right? And I happen to know because I've done some modding and things that these have a bandaging quality of about three quarters of what the proper bandage is. So three quarters as powerful is only 25% less effective than the standard bandage. So that's pretty close. So I feel very comfortable using these. I will use these 99% of the time. The only time I won't is if I'm way down to like half a health or one health or whatever, and I need every little bit that I can to recover as the maximum amount of health, then I will use proper bandages. But the, the effect is pretty negligible, so I will almost always use boiled makeshift bandages. So that's one half. Of our, of, our, of our stuff taken care of. Now the disinfectant, we can also make disinfectant, not at this stage of the game. Uh, it's called antiseptic now. You'll see we can make makeshift antiseptic, but the only way to do that currently is from ethanol or denatured alcohol you know, to make a very powerful alcohol antiseptic. The problem is we don't have those things. Uh, you, at this stage of the game, we cannot manufacture those things. Later in the game, we absolutely can make ethanol, I believe, uh, is part yeah, because, yeah, we can definitely make ethanol later in the game. Problem is, we don't have the books required for that. We definitely don't have the skills required for that. And I'm pretty sure we also don't have the tools required for that because that requires some specialized uh, distilling tools, if I remember right. Although, I don't think I've done that in like two years where I've distilled alcohol. So I don't know, the qualities may have changed and requirements for that may have changed. But I'm pretty sure you can make ethanol. Denatured alcohol also seems like something we would be able to make later in the game, but currently we don't have the means to do that. 
Similarly, there are other sources of antiseptic in the game. Uh, cattail jelly is the one that most people are aware of. There are cattails that spawn in the game. I don't think we're near anything that would have cattails. They spawn around ponds and rivers, things like that. Um, so we haven't seen anything like that. But you can harvest cattails in the game. Not only can you eat the cattails, but you can convert them to cattail jelly, which is a form of antiseptic. Now that does require a book to do that. So if you don't have the book, you can't. Obviously, you don't have that available to you. But there are means by which to make your own antiseptic. We just don't have them yet. Antiseptic is more valuable than bandages. And so for our current health status, I don't really feel that we need to use antiseptic. Um, antiseptic is for when you really need significant improvements overnight. Uh, or if you have a lot of it. We, we do have a lot of it. I don't have a problem. Like basically every first aid kit has antiseptic in it. We already have two bottles plus the other two. Plus I'm pretty sure there's some on this pile that was never sorted. Yeah, we have, you know, 60-ish portions of antiseptic. How often do we get bite wounds? We haven't at all in the last day, even though we fought. How many enemies are we up to? We've killed 55 monsters. We still haven't gotten a bite. Um, using a spear, you're very unlikely to get bites if you pay attention and kite them. So, um, you know, we don't need to hoard the antiseptic. We have a ton of it. Uh, so we could apply it. We may, you know what, we'll apply antiseptic to our right leg just so that we can maybe quantify how much we heal overnight. Um, and then we will treat our companion. And he's much more damaged than we are. So I think we will put antiseptic on his leg and head because we really don't want him to break a limb. And if your head HP is decreased to zero, you die. In fact, I don't know if I ever said that. If your arms or legs are reduced to zero all the way down, they will break and it will take several weeks for them to recover. You'll splint them, you'll take care of them. But if your head or torso are reduced to zero, you die. That is the end of the game. So in general, those are the two where you really focus on armor and stuff. And also for healing reasons, those are the highest priority. So if your head gets down to one tick, you absolutely need to be addressing that and probably not going outside until you've taken care of it because you will die. So, um, because of that, we will apply bandages to our wounds. Let's apply some disinfectant. So, where's the disinfectant? Apply antiseptic to our leg. We don't need to do this, but we'll do this. Then we will apply uh, boiled makeshift bandages to every body part. Because, again, we don't need to be stingy with these. We can make these pretty much any time that we want to. Uh, so we'll apply our bandages. Now the other important thing to note is that the actual quality of the bandaging, oh, I accidentally put two on the same limb, that's okay. Um, because I accidentally, uh, because of our low first aid skill, uh, we're not gonna get very much healing out of this. First aid zero is quite bad. Uh, what we could have done and probably should have done, which I didn't think about, was read the first aid booklet. There's one of these in every first aid kit and it will take you up to level one. Every level of first aid is important. It will increase the amount that you heal overnight when you apply bandages and disinfectant to your wounds. If we look at our wounds, how do we do this? The app menu, you'll see all of the qualities are poor. Now this is partially due to the type of bandage we're using, um, but this again, remember this bandage can go up to average quality or whatever. Uh, it's poor because we suck at first aid. We're only uh, zero in first aid. If we were level six in first aid, we would get much higher bandaging and disinfecting quality and therefore would heal more overnight. So if you're in a really bad spot and you're at one head hit point, you should try to read your books and level up first aid before you disinfect and whatnot to get the absolute maximum number of healed points overnight. Um, Similarly, I imagine it works the same way on Lyle Darden. How do we treat, can I apply antiseptic? Nope, just applies to me. How do I talk? I haven't done it yet. I need you to come with me. Uh, let's, how do I treat your wounds, my friend? I want you to use this item, antiseptic. Nope. Hmm. Okay. I don't see anything about treating wounds. 
use item on antiseptic there we go we'll apply that to his head and we'll apply another one to his arm or his leg rather and then we will bandage his wounds this is a bit tedious because i have to menu for each one of these things but we do kind of want to treat him so that he's not in a particularly bad spot. So let's use item on. Okay. Now I really would like you to go to bed, Lyle. Okay, so I don't think we can make him go to sleep. What we can do is tell him to guard this location again. People on Discord said that they would still sleep if you tell them to guard the location. So we shouldn't worry too much about that. Um, I would like to pull the bed into the shadows so he'd be able to sleep a little bit better because sleeping in the daylight generally doesn't work. So he may just wait until morning, but that's not a problem for right now. Let's drop our medical supplies. What I'm going to do, we're going to go down to our basement and we're going to save the game. And then I'm going to mutate, player, mutate, self-aware. Yes and we can now see our precise hit points. Now, I'm not gonna save with this. Um, we're gonna revert this, but I thought I would let us see how much we repaired overnight. In fact, I'll write down our values, 83, 89, 84, 86, 77, 68. And remember that 68 is the one we disinfected. So now we're gonna sleep. Now, sleeping in Cataclysm, yes, don't set the alarm. When you sleep in Cataclysm, you regain more HP than when you're awake. Now, no matter what, in a 24 hour period, you will recover at least one HP per, I don't know if it's one HP overall or one HP per limb, but you will restore a minimum of one HP. If you treat your wounds and you sleep, you will recover more than that. Um, because when you sleep, your, your natural regenerative whatever comes over you and you, you regenerate health more quickly. Now there's lore in Cataclysm, I don't want to be spoilery, but the zombies in Cataclysm aren't your typical zombies, they have something else going on that has made them zombies, and part of that also has impacted the character, and so our characters still heal more quickly than a human in real life. So a human in real life would not heal as quickly as a Cataclysm character. So overnight you regain more HP, so when you're sick and you're not doing very well uh, health-wise, it's it's good to sleep because you will regenerate more health uh, than if you were if you were conscious. Treating your wounds is a very important part of Cataclysm. You'll see we've recovered quite a lot of HP and we're not even awake yet. The problem with uh, us going to sleep now is that we're going to wake up at night. So we're not going to be able to go up there and clear out those, those zombies around. Something is making noise from the northeast and below you hear kaboom. Yeah, that's that's fine. So if we look at our HP... We bandaged our head, we only recovered 4 HP. We bandaged our torso, we only recovered 4 HP. We bandaged our arm, we only recovered 4 HP. We bandaged our other arm, wait a minute, 4? No, we recovered 6 on this limb, on left arm. On right arm, we recovered 5 HP. On left leg, we recovered 10 HP, which is surprising. Oh, is that the one we disinfected? I don't think it was. Uh, and then on our right leg, we recovered 24. Now, this is the limb that we disinfected, okay? So you can see that that's substantially more. Most of these were 4 to 6, 10 at the cap. We disinfected our right leg. We gained 24 HP. That's considerably more uh, HP. So disinfecting is by far the most potent thing you can do to recover hit points overnight. Definitely disinfect wounds that you need the most, the maximum HP recovery. And again, remember, this is all at first aid level one. If we were first aid level five or level six, we would have recovered even more hit points. So it's very important to treat your wounds. It's very important to raise that skill. Now, let's talk about sleep as well. So we're going to sleep. Now, one of the things we noticed just a minute ago uh, was that we heard noises from the prison that woke us up. That happens. If you're trying to sleep in a location that's very loud, you're going to continually wake up and it's going to be frustrating. If you're trying to sleep in an area that is bright, so if we were trying to sleep in Lyle Darden's bed up here, we would not be able to sleep because it's so bright, we would get messages that it's too bright to sleep. So if you're sleeping in a vehicle, you need to black out all the windows and whatnot in order to sleep. If you're sleeping in a building, you need to be in a darker area, preferably away from sound. 
Something else to note about sleep is that in Cataclysm, as of the last time I checked, I haven't checked recently, if you are not tired, it is pretty much impossible to sleep. So do not ever try to sleep when you're not tired because you will just lay in bed for 25 hours until you're tired and fall asleep. And it's frustrating. It will prompt you. It'll say, hey, you know, you're not falling asleep. Do you, do you want to continue sleeping? Which is a good quality of life thing because I've definitely laid in bed for like 40 hours and never been able to sleep and it pissed me off. But um, if you're not tired, don't even try because it's just not going to work. Similarly, you need to be in a comfortable place. If we come over here to the floor and try to sleep, it's not comfortable. Therefore, we will never fall asleep. Even though the game doesn't tell you it's impossible to sleep, it will just say like, you're uncomfortable. Would you like to keep trying to sleep? And again, you will do this for like 40 hours and never fall asleep and it can be very frustrating. So it's very important that you have a comfortable place to sleep. That means a bed, a couch, a chair, something that is somewhat comfortable. Add to this that beds have a comfort quality to them. I'm not sure of the specific numbers, um, but also putting a blanket or sheet or, did I just take off clothes? Don't wield your long sleeve shirt. Were we wearing this? I think we were. Why Why did you take your shirt off? It's, there's a weird power flex. Don't do that. Um, adding a sheet or something to your bed makes it more comfortable, I believe. Adding a pillow adds that as well. I think for temperature reasons, blankets and whatnot are also important. For sleeping, will keep you warm. Uh, if you have no blankets or sheets, you can pile clothing on your bed and it will tell you, you'll get a message like you use your pile of clothes for warmth. So, you know, there are, there are ways to work around that. It's not super relevant, um, but it will come up on occasion. Again, we generate more health when we're sleeping. Anything else about sleeping? Uh, sleeping is just like hunger and thirst. You'll get this pop-up that tells you when you're tired and whatnot. Tired is, is like, hey, you're tired, you could do with a nap. Then I think it's dead tired and then exhausted and there may be one after that. If you go too long without sleeping, your character will just fall asleep, I believe, uh, occasionally, which is definitely problematic. You don't want to be falling asleep in the midst of combat or driving. So uh, I don't think I've ever had that happen. I don't know how that works, but I'm sure it's not good. So definitely sleep when you're tired. Sleeping uh, will pass time, which means we'll probably wake up hungry and thirsty uh, generally, I try to eat and drink before I sleep. Um, pain is not significant. I think if you're in too much pain, it may inf uh, like affect your ability to sleep. Uh, let's just eat something as a snack. We need to start cooking some of this before it starts going bad. We'll eat this stuff that's going to go bad very soon. Don't eat raw wild vegetables. We'll eat a glass jar of pickled fish. Why not eat a pear? That should take care of our hunger to some extent. How's our weight doing? We're still overweight, which is fine. Um, yeah, so just sleep. When you're tired, just sleep. Um, we saved after we bandaged and whatnot, but before we mutated. So we'll recover roughly the same amount of HP. It'll probably be slightly different, but we'll be able to see. Uh, most likely the right leg is going to go almost to full. Everything else will probably tick up to half a bar. Um and torso may fully heal overnight, I'm not sure. Uh, in fact, yeah, our torso is at 89. We probably have about 93 or 94 HP, so that's very likely to go up to max or be one point shy of max. Um, so yeah, sleeping is important for healing, uh, is important for taking care of your sleep status. Really not much else. Uh, it definitely helps with pain. Because if you you know take a few painkillers and then go to bed, you're pretty much guaranteed to wake up and not be in pain anymore. Hunger and thirst can be issues while sleeping. Um, cold can be an issue while sleeping. If you go to sleep and you don't have blankets and you're wearing crappy clothing, you can freeze to death in your sleep and never wake up. Um, if enemies break in, you will wake up to noises. So like if you're sleeping near a window and an enemy breaks in, that might wake you up. It might not. If an enemy attacks you, that might wake you up. It might not. I think it has a very good chance of waking you up, um, but I don't think it's a guarantee, so you could potentially not. Something is making noise from the northeast and below you hear kaboom. So again, we're hearing um, shots, which woke us up, which is unfortunate because we didn't sleep the full time that we would have slept, so we maybe could have recovered another hit point or two. And again, you'll see our right leg healed the most. That's because we disinfected it. 
Um, and Lyle Darden probably has not slept. Uh, so examine wounds. Yeah, so even though we treated these, these are probably going to wear off before he sleeps. So I don't know that he's even going to get value out of us treating him. I'm a little irritated by that because we can't force them to sleep. Um, yeah, I was talking to people online. They said you can't. They'll sleep when they want to. So I don't love that. Uh, I kind of wish I could be like, all right, soldier, it's time for a nap. You know, take advantage of it while you can. Because obviously someone would do that uh, in a survival situation. Anyway, we've taken care of our wounds more or less. We've treated our wounds. Uh, we've talked about healing stuff. Um can't think of anything else about treating our wounds that's important. Can't think of anything else about sleeping that's important. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I will be back with more Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tutorial series in the near future. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode.